What are custom dimensions in GA4 and how can they help you understand your data better? That's what we're gonna answer in today's video. Simply put, custom dimensions are additional pieces of data for the events that you are collecting already or about users. That's why they say that custom dimensions can be either user scoped or event scoped. If we look at this picture, for example, we could say that this person who is hiking is a user and she has a dog. So there will be a user custom dimension, whereas the event itself is hiking and it's happening, I'd say, in springtime. So season would be spring as a custom dimension that's stitched to the event itself and not to the user. So when a custom dimension is event scoped, it basically enriches a particular event that's coming into your GA4 property according to a rule that you've set up. Here is Google official documentation about parameters being collected by default with every event. So each time a piece of data has been sent into GA4, it also picks up language, page location, page refer, title and screen resolution. So you could say that these are dimensions of an event and they are partially accessible in GA4 as I will demonstrate right now uh, by comparing two different GA4 properties. Number one, we're looking at DDU GA4 property just for the website. And here we are looking at the rollup property. So as you can see, event count in the rollup property is somewhat higher than the other one. So for example, if we just want to analyze page views, or let's say session start. So we just uh, do the table filter for the session start. In rollup property, we do the same thing for the just website property and if we wanted in this particular table to see what was the page location, so the full URL where the session started, for the website property, we would be able to do that because page location was added as a custom dimension here. What does that mean? Well, regardless of the fact that GA4 is sending that piece of data automatically, in order to have this secondary dimension available, you needed to go into the admin panel and then custom definition and actually add that uh, page location as a custom dimension from the available custom dimensions. Right now, this has been done in this property a long time ago, but for rollup property, as you can see, I cannot add location because page location hasn't been registered as a custom dimension to use the official Google naming convention. So we're going to do it right now. Let's go into the admin panel, custom definitions, and then go into create custom dimensions. And from the list of available parameters, you choose page location, then describe this. And also, I like to use the same name from the incoming parameter as a GA4 dimension name, even though it doesn't have to be. It can be called page location dimension, for example. So when we create that, right now, this dimension will be available in the reports, but unfortunately it's not working retroactively, so we cannot use it backwards. For example, we're looking at session starts. So if I added this custom dimension, the table is not populating because GA4 started to register it just a couple of seconds ago, so they are not accessible in the standard reports. However, in the explorations, even though this rollup property didn't have page location registered up until now, we were able to access that dimension as a dimension that has been pre-populated in GA4. So let's say we wanted to see event count, for example. And then in order to follow the what we were uh, doing with session start, we can filter this table 
by saying we just want the event name that exactly matches session start and then here we see how many sessions actually started on this particular page location so we see the full URL which could be interesting because this is a rollout property that actually catches several subdomains on data driven new main domain now to add an actual custom dimension to an event that we're sending to GA4 we need to use some sort of dispatcher for data to be able to actually stitch that additional parameter for the event so let's use Google Tag Manager to add for example let's say we wanted to understand what do people click on data-driven new website what text actually is compelling for them in order to make visitors click whether it's a button or a link or any other text that gets clicked on the website so we would need to create a GA4 event choose the configuration tag for the rollup property we'd call it uh, click event name is click tag will be named GA4 event GA4 event click and the parameter that we want to add is click text right now we do have an automatically collected variable that's called click text that we will use for these purposes A trigger for this GA4 event click will be all clicks from the uh, from the offer list so it's just a let's call it click trigger and if we save this GA4 event and preview we go to data driven new and here let's say I click on the products navigation link in the tag assistant when the click happened we had this GA4 event click tag fired and the parameter that was called click text was filled with the value products and then if we look at the debugger which I had prepared here previously here is the click and click text is products so right now this rollup property is collecting all the clicks that happen on website and is actually filling the click text with this piece of data but in order to access this data in the reports I'm gonna have to go to the admin panel and then register this custom definition again I won't be able to find it here because this property hasn't collected any click text up until a few seconds ago so I'm actually uh, eligible to hard code it here as long as I'm sure that I don't make a mistake a typo and that's it I register this one and it's ready to start collecting this event scoped custom parameter now with this custom dimension that we added we are enriching the existing click automatically collected event but we are also firing it on clicks on website that are not links semantically speaking because there are buttons or people are clicking on the random pieces of text on the website so this custom dimension would be eligible for analyzing in the context of automatically collected click but also in the context of any click on the website now let's say we wanted to track particularly people clicking on footer so we understand which of these ones get clicked and how often so we need to identify these in CSS as something okay it's called menu link let's see if it works also on mobile class is also menu link so we're gonna use that identifier as something that we can identify footer click in Google Tag Manager again so we go here 
and then create a new tag. Again, it would be GA4 event. The name would be footer click. But this time for trigger, we need to create one ourselves. So we'd say links, but with click class contains menu item. I think I'm not wrong here. It says class menu link, sorry. Menu link. And then on mobile, we're talking about menu link again. Now we need to add a parameter to this event. So we're gonna say it's called footer text clicked. And we are gonna add again an automatically collected uh, variable that's called click text, my bad. So when we preview this again, this is supposed to fire two tags upon this click. Let's say link jumpstart. And if we go into the debugger, here is the click that we registered a couple of minutes ago with click text. But then there is a footer click with its own custom parameter called footer text clicked. And we are going to register that one as well in the admin panel. Paste it here and then paste it over here again. If you remember that we talked about event scoped parameters and then user scoped ones, say that we wanted to track a user visitor type. Luckily in data driven you, we have a data letter push. So when we inspect data layer here, we'll be able to see that visitor type here is the administrator because I'm logged in right now. So if we wanted to pick up this piece of data from data layer, then we need to create a user defined variable in Google Tag Manager. Type will be data layer variable. Let's call it data layer visitor type. We need to be sure that we type exactly as it is in the data letter itself. Save this one. And last thing we need to do is go into GA4 configuration tag and add that piece of data about a user each time the configuration tag loads. So here it says user properties. We're going to call it user type, or we can call it whatever we want. Let's call it visitor type. This time we're going to use underscores. And for the value, we're going to choose the data layer variable that we just created. Here it is. Save this one. And if we redo the tag assistant we're gonna see that upon the load of this page debugger should have registered visitor type that's correct here it is visitor type in the user properties it's called administrator so each of these next events that get sent into ga4 have the same user property with visitor type administrator now, if I log out of my account on DDU, let's hit the preview button again.
we should be able to see that the debugger receives the information about user not being logged in. Let's see if the tag assistant shows what we expect them. So yeah, user property, it says visitor type is visitor logged out. And also in GA4, we see the same thing. So visitor type now says visitor logged out because as you've seen, I logged out. Now also for the third time, in order to be able to see this in the future reports, we need to go to custom definitions and create this custom dimension called, what did we call it? Let's see over here. So it's GA4 rollup configuration tag. It's called visitor underscore type. Okay, let's type it like that again. We are going to register the dimension with the same name. The scope will be user now. Sorry. And we are good to go now. I hope that after watching this video, you understand uh, custom dimensions better and uh, that you can tell the difference between user scope and the event scope. One thing that I missed to uh, note is that uh, for the event scoped custom parameters, the limit is 50 in GA4 and for user scoped is 25. So be careful. I haven't ran into an account that hit that limit, but probably if multiple people are using this feature and then everybody adds a uh, parameter as they please, I say this limit is probably closer than you would think. So it's a good uh, practice to be frugal here and for example, not use, I would say footer text clicked as I did in this demonstration, but rely on something more general like click text, then use it across all the parameters that you want to stitch to events that actually deal with text clicked. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel. See you soon.